Today we're going to take a look at simplifying radicals. So we're going to take a break from quadratics because we need to be able to simplify a radical um, in an upcoming lesson. So we need to take a break and then take a moment um, today on just simplifying a radical. Okay? A radical is a square root. Okay? So to simplify the square root of n, where n is just some number, we factor Okay, and remember, factor times factor equals a product. So we factor it out so that one of the factors is its greatest perfect squares. Okay, so let's take a minute right above it here and list our perfect squares. So one is a perfect square, is one times one, two times two, four, nine, 16, 5 times 5, 25, 36, 49 is 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 64, 81, 100, and so on. Okay, so when we factor it out, one of those factors must be a perfect square. Now for vocab, okay, the radical is the symbol commonly referred to as the square root. The index Index is the number that's out front of the radical. Now for a square root, it's the index of 2. Well, we don't write the 2. So, for instance, down below, the square root of 100 is 10 because 10 squared is 100. Okay, but we don't write an index of 2. We do write an index of 3, so say the cube root of 8. Or the, cube, or the fourth root of 16, we write every other index but the 2. Okay? Radican is the number underneath the symbol. So the radican is 8 here, and the radican is 16. Square root of 49 is 7, because 7 squared is 49, and the square root of 16 is 4. So the steps are below to simplify the radical. So if we're looking at the example, and the example is the square root of 72, that number is not a perfect square, or a non-perfect square. If it was a perfect square, we would just take the square root of it. If you type it in the calculator, the square root of 72 is a decimal. Well, we don't want the decimal form, we want the simplest radical form, always or when possible. Okay, so let's type it in, square root of 72, you can see we get a decimal. Or the square root of 16, we get a whole number. So if you were to get a decimal, you need to then simplify it. So step number one. We need to find the largest perfect square factor that divides into 72. So when you're looking at the factors of 72, we've got 1 times 72, 2 times 36, um, 3, 3 going to 72, yeah, because 3 goes into 7 two times, bring down, so 24, so 3 times 24, um, 4 times 18, 5, no, 6 times 12, and then 8 times 9. So our perfect squares are 36, 4, and 9. Okay, 1, but 1's a factor of anything. And that's the smallest perfect square. So the largest perfect uh, square is 36. Okay? So we need to find the largest, the largest perfect square factor is 36. So we break it down in the square root of 36, again being our perfect square factor, and then we put the 2 second. We do that because we can take the square root of 36. So step number two, write the radicand as the product. So that's right there. And then simplify the square root of 36 is going to be 6. And then radical 2. We do that um, because we don't want to write radical 2, 6, which would be fine. But that's hard to tell if that's radical 2, 6 or is that the square root of 26. So that there's no confusion. We write the coefficient out front just as we would for 6x. Okay? 
So we divide it up into our perfect square factor, non-perfect square factor. Okay? So let's look at the first example. 18. So 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. The largest perfect square factor of 18 is 9, and it's 9 times 2. And that's written as a product. When there's no symbol in between, like there's no plus, there's no minus, when there's no symbol in between, that means multiplication. Just like a, b means a times b. So this is radical 9 times radical 2. Square root of 9 is 3 radical 2. 125. So take a moment to determine from our list above what the largest perfect square factor of 125 is. So break it up into two radicals. The largest perfect square factor, and you can see the number within 125, is 25. If you have 5 quarters, you have a buck 25. Take the square root of your perfect square as 5, and you leave the other radical alone. As you can't uh, take the square root of it, and you can't break it down. And now the next one, 108. What's the largest perfect square factor of 108? The largest perfect square factor of 108 is going to be 36 times 3. So you break it down, square root of 36 is 6, so it's going to be negative 6 radical 3. Now what if you didn't pick the largest? Okay, 108 is also divisible by 9, which is a perfect square. So say you broke it down into 9 and 12, and you get negative 3 radical 12. Now those decimals are equivalent, but this is not in simplified form. So you can use the 9, but you'd have to break it down more than once. So if we did that, it would be negative 3, and then 12 breaks down, largest perfect square uh, factor of 12 is 4, and that's 4 times 3. Okay, leaving the radical 3 alone, we can't do anything with that, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times negative 3 is your negative 6. You get the same thing, but there's more work. So try to pick your largest, and you want to check at the number underneath the radical, okay? If it has a perfect square factor like 12, you have to break it down again, okay? 3 is prime. The only factors are 1 in itself. So I know that's fully simplified. So negative 6, radical 3. On the back side, that reads, again, because there's no symbol, Negative 3 times the square root of 16. So it would be negative 3 times 4, which is a negative 12. 2 plus or minus the square root of 20? Well, I first need to simplify this to see if I can even add it to the 2. So 20, we've got 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. So 4 is a perfect square. So I want to break that down into 4 radical, fi or radical 4 radical 5. Take the square root of 4, and this becomes 2 radical 5. Bring down the 2 plus or minus, and you can't combine a radical term with a non-radical term. Okay? This, treat this just like 2 plus 2x. We can't combine an x term with a non-x term. Okay? So this would be final answer. And then last, um, we know that when we're dividing polynomials, we divide each term up top by the denominator, but we first need to break down 63. So six, the square root of 63 is large perfect square factor 9, so radical 9 times radical 7, and then the square root of 9 is 3 radical 7. So this expression becomes 6 plus or minus 3 radical 7 over 3. Now dividing 6 by 3, we get 2. Keep the plus or minus, and then 3 radical 3, or 3 radical 7, excuse me, over 3. I just write that off to the side. The 3's are going to cancel. 
and we're just left with the radical 7. And 7 is prime. It has no other uh, perfect square factors. The only factors are 1 and 7, so that's fully simplified.